Hello everyone, this is Nabil Murad from Toronto, Canada. In this training video, I'll be talking about the count function. I'll show you 24 different examples of the basic use of the count function. In this example, I have a list, and in this list, I do have some text in uppercase, I do have some text in lowercase, I do have some numbers, I also have some errors, I have some blanks. This list consists of five columns and 12 rows. So I have like 60 different cells. What if I would like to count the numbers? If I want to count the numbers, I'll be using a basic count function, equal count, and then I hit tab. What would you like to count? I would like to count this entire range. And then when I close bracket, and then I hit enter. The count function returns 21 because the count function counts only numeric values. We do have another function, the count a function, which counts everything excluding blanks. So if I type equal count a, and then I hit tab and select the same exact range, and then close bracket and hit enter, I have 55 values because it's excluding the five blank cells. What if I want to count the blanks? Equal count blank, and the count blank will simply count the blank cells. So the total number of cells I have is the sum of the count A and the count blank function. Now let's talk in a little bit more details about counting numbers. In this example, I have the same exact list. And what if I would like to count the numbers greater than 50? And because I do have a condition, I'll be using the count if function. So if I type equal count if, and then I hit tab, I select the range. I'll be using that range multiple times. So let's copy this little part. And then I click at the end. And when I hit comma, it asks me about my condition and I want to count numbers greater than 50, so I click on this cell, I4, which has my condition, I close the bracket and hit enter, and I have 13 numbers greater than 50. I could create the same exact function in, in two other ways. So if I type equal count if, and then I click at the end and type, my condition is in double quotes. I'll type greater than, close the double quotation, and I need to use an ampersand, shift seven on your keyboard, and click on the 50. If I hit enter, I get the same exact result. I can also create this calculation in a different way. So if I type equal count if, and then select the same exact range, and then comma, this time I'm going to type the comparison operator and the number inside the double quotation, close bracket, and hit enter. Three different ways for counting numbers above a certain cutoff you specify. But if I would like to count numbers between 40 and 80? So I'll start by counting the numbers less than 80. So I'll type equal count if, and then I hit tab, select the range, and then comma, what's your condition? My condition is less than, I'll type it in double quotation, less than an ampersand and click on the 50. If I close bracket at this point, what do I have? It gives me all the numbers less than 80, but I want the numbers between 40 and 80. So I'm going to subtract the count of numbers less than 40. I'll put it in the edit mode and type minus count if, and then I hit tab, and this time I'm going to select the same exact range, comma, and then in double quotes type less than, join it with a comparison operator, and click on 40. When I close bracket, we have 11 numbers between 40 and 80. What if I want to count the numbers equal to 65? That's the same exact count if function, select the range, and then comma, click on 65, close the bracket. We do have two occurrences 
of 65. What if I want to exclude these two occurrences? So in this case, I'm going to type equal count if, and then I hit tab, select the entire range, and then comma, and this time in double quotes, I'll type not equal, greater than, smaller than means not equal, and then an end symbol, and then click on the 65, when I hit enter, I get 58 values not equal to 65. Let's see another example. What if I would like to count text? If I want to count text based upon a condition. So my first example will be equal count if I want to find how many occurrences of mango. So I'm going to select this entire range and then comma, click on my condition and then close bracket and hit enter, we have eight occurrences. What if I have two conditions? I would like to count either apples or oranges. So I'll be counting two values. So I'll type equal count if, select the range, and then comma, select my first condition, close bracket, and then add a plus sign, another count if, and then hit the tab key, select the same exact range, comma, and select my second condition, close bracket. We do have 11 occurrences of apples or oranges. The count function is not case sensitive. So let's see an example. Equal count if I want to count how many bananas do we have? And I typed it for the first time in capital, close bracket and hit enter. If I create the same formula equal count if, and then I hit tab, I'll select the same exact range comma, and then I want to change my condition to lowercase, and then hit enter, I get the same exact number. What if you would like to count bananas in lowercase? You are concerned about only the occurrences of the lower case. So in this case, I cannot use the same exact function. I'll be using an exact function, equal exact. And for the exact function, I'll be selecting the entire range and then comma, click on my condition. And when I hit enter, I'll get an error. So look at that when I hit enter, because the exact function cannot return multiple values. But in fact, it's obeying my instructions. So if I hit the F2 key and then select this part, the exact function, and, and calculate it by hitting the F9 key, when I hit the F9, I find that whenever it finds bananas in lowercase, it returns it true. Otherwise, it returns a false. But because the exact function cannot handle all these occurrences of trues, so I'm going to put it in a bigger function. I would like to convert the true and false into ones and zeros. So I'm going to type a double minus sign and the double minus sign will convert the trues and minus in the, into ones and zeros. So I would like to add up the ones to get the total count. So I'll undo and the function that can handle this situation is the sum product function so if I type some product and then I'm counting how many occurrences of trues and false when I hit enter, I have six occurrences. You can count text regardless of any condition. So although we don't have a direct function to count text, I'll be using the count if function equal count if, and then I hit tab in this entire range, how many occurrences of text I have, and then my condition will be this asterisk. Asterisk is wildcard, and it means it can replace, it's a replacement character. It can replace any number of characters from zero to infinity. When I hit enter, we have 34 text. I can also type it in a different way. If I type count if, and then I hit the tab key, select the same range, hit comma, and in double quotation, I'll type the asterisk, close the bracket and hit enter, and I get the same exact result. You can specify text starting with a certain character or ending with a certain character. So if I want to find text ending with ES, 
So I'm going to use the count if function one more time and I'll hit tab. I'll select the range, hit comma, and then my condition is in this cell, the replacement character, the asterisk, followed by ES, and then I close bracket and hit enter. I could type it in double quotation exactly as we did before, equal count if, select the entire range, and then comma, and in double quotes, I'm going to type asterisk and ES, double quote, close bracket, and then hit enter. So we created multiple text function representing different situations. What if I would like to search for errors? Now, if I look for errors, I do have a division by zero error multiple times, and I would like to find them. So there are three methods of doing that. There is a long way for doing it when I count everything and I, I subtract the numbers and text. Let's do that. Equal count A and the count A function will count everything. So when I hit enter, it says you have 55 different values. I'll put it in the edit mode and I would like to subtract. What would you like to subtract? I would like to subtract the numbers. So in brackets, I type count and then I hit the tab key and select the same range. So this one will count the numbers. And then I would like to add also the text. And the text is extracted or is counted by using a countif function. I'll select the same range, hit comma, and type my condition double quote, star double quote, close the bracket for the countif function and close the bracket for the subtraction. When I hit enter, we have two occurrences of errors, two occurrences of the division by zero. I can also use a different way. If I have my condition, the division by zero error in a separate cell, I can refer to this cell in a count if function. So I can type equal count if, and then I hit tab, select the range, and then hit comma, and click on my condition. When I close bracket, it returned the same exact number. But there is a better way for counting errors. So if I use the isError function, equal isError, and the isError function will find how many errors do we have. It will say, yes, this is an error. No, it's not an error. So when I close bracket and hit enter, it says true. In fact, it evaluated every individual cell whether it's an error or not. Let's select the is error and put it and calculate it by hitting the F9 key. So whenever there is an error, I get it true. Whenever I don't have an error, I get it false. I'll undo that. And I would like to convert the false and trues into plus and minus. So I'm going to type a double negative. And when I type a double negative, now I'll be converting this part into ones and zeros. I would like to add the ones, so I'll undo and put the whole thing in a sum product function. So when I hit sum product, I close the bracket, and then when I hit enter, it says you have two errors. So three different methods for counting the errors. I can also calculate the percentage. So in the next example, we carry the survey among clients about the quality of our services, and some of the clients said, yes, it's a good quality, some of the clients said no, and some of the clients did not respond at all. So how many clients said yes? This is calculated by using a count if function. So if I say equal count if, and then I select the range, and in this range, I would like to count how many occurrences of yes. So I type it in double quote and then close bracket and hit enter. Six clients answered yes. What's the percentage of those clients who answered yes? I can calculate the percentage compared to the total number of clients who participated in the survey. So if I say equal count if, and then I hit tab, I select the entire range, comma, in double quotes, I type my condition yes, and then I close bracket. That's the same exact function that I created in the cell above. And because I would like to calculate a percentage, so I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide by the total number of clients who participated in the survey, 
And to do that, I'm going to use the rows function. So I'll open bracket and click and drag and select the whole range, close bracket and hit enter. I'll get 60% of clients replied yes. Let's see each part of this function. If I put it in the edit mode, what does the rows function return? If I calculate it by hitting F9, it will be returning 10, and the numerator, the countif function, will be returning 6. That's why we get 60%. What if I would like to calculate the percentage of clients who said yes among those clients who responded to the survey, those who did not respond should be excluded from the result of the survey. So in this case, I'll be changing the denominator. So I'll type equal count if, and then I hit tab. I select the whole range and then comma. My condition is yes, I type it in double quotes. And here I would like to divide by the number of clients who responded to the survey excluding those who did not respond. So I'm going to use the count a function and then I'll select the same exact range, close the bracket and hit enter. 75% of those who responded are happy with our service. So in my next sheet, in the answer sheet, you have all the answers, you have all the formulas and functions. If you want to download the exercise file, to practice, you can do that by clicking on the link below this video. Thank you for watching and see you in our next tutorial.